Hey everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to cover the basics of LSL in about 10 minutes. By the end of this video, you should have a clear understanding of the core LSL concepts and be able to write your own scripts. To start, create a new prim, right click, edit and go to the content tab. You should see a button that says new script and if you click that, it should give you a new script that has some LSL already written out for you, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to start from scratch and take you through it as I go. The first thing you need to learn about are states. A simple way to think of a state would be to think of your computer. It has an on state, an off state, and a sleep state. In each one of those states, there are different things you can and can't do with your PC. And the same with scripts. You can assign certain actions or events to a state. And going back to the computer example, when your PC is in the on state, you can watch YouTube videos, but when it's in the off state, you can't. So to sum up, states are ways to control the actions of your script. Every script must have a default state, even if you don't really use it. So the, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to type the word default, followed by an open curly bracket, and I need to put a closed curly bracket right away, and if you just click your up arrow and hit enter, everything within those two curly brackets belong to the default state. The next thing we need to look at are events. Within states, you have events. When we need to know something has happened, we use events. For example, if you want to know when your object has been touched, we use touch events. Or if you want to know when your script has entered into a new state, we use the state entry event. So for example, we're going to type the word touch start, followed by an open curly bracket, type the word intro, and we're just going to say the word touched. Now this can be anything. I'll come back to parameters later on, but for now, that's how we're going to type it. And we need to go down a new line, open up your curly bracket, hit enter, and once again you need to click your close bracket, same as we did before, and there we have our touch start event. So all the events are pretty much written the same, there may be different parameters, but they're pretty much all lowercase, and they're also followed by a curly bracket. So the next thing we have to look at are functions. Within events, you have functions, and this way you tell the script what you wanted to do when the event was triggered. For example, if I wanted to have the script say hello when it's touched, I'd use the inbuilt function LLC. And all inbuilt functions use the prefix of LL. So if I wanted to do say, it wouldn't be say, it would be LL say. Now, there are a ton of functions. You're not going to know them all. So if you click up here where it says help, and go to the keyword help, it should open up a window with the LSL wiki, and we can just look up a few things like LLC. So I'm going to type LLC up here, and we're going to see what it says. It may take a minute to load. Okay, here we go. So it says that it takes a parameter of an intro with the channel, and then a string message. Now, the intro and string are both data types. We'll come back to those later. But basically, it says it needs two things. It needs a channel and it needs a message. And parameters will be always be se separated by a comma. So let's go and type this out and see what it looks like. So we open up with a roundy bracket. So we can see here it needs a roundy bracket, followed by the channel we want to type it on. So we're going to say zero, followed by the message, so we need to type comma, and the message is a type string, and with strings, you need to put in quotation marks. So I'm just gonna put two quotation marks here, and within those two quotation marks, I'm just gonna type the word, hello. Now we need to make sure we close our LLC, and put a semicolon at the end. Perfect. Let's run this and see what happens. So we can see down here, that's compiled successfully and the save is complete. Let's just close out this and click it. So there we have it, it says hello. So now we know the script works. So once again, we type the word LLC, followed by the channel, followed by hello. Now, all the inbuilt functions, there's a ton of them. You're not gonna know every single one of them. So it's always good to use the LSL wiki to look up what you need. So if I want to go LL owner say, so 
So edit owner say all needs a message. So wait this new channel since I'm going to be the owner. It always is going to know that I'm the owner. So it doesn't need a channel. So we can just say that to owner say. Followed by removing the channel. And we're going to click save. Perfect. Let's touch that and see what happens. It still says hello, but it will only say hello to me when someone touches the subject since I'm the owner. So perfect, that's functions covered. So the last thing we're going to look at are variables and data types. So like we saw in the last example, LLC needed two types. You needed an uh, intro and you also needed a string. But you always don't have to put it in line. So for example, I could go up here and just type intro channel and put an equal sign zero on here i could put in uh, a string my message and put that equal to hello you've touched the prim and strings have to put in quotes and both have to have a semicolon at the end of it so now under here we don't have to put in zero we can just put in channel and over here we don't have to put in hello we can just put in my message so if we save that and go up here for this moment it says you've touched this prim so we know that works and this can be used all over your script you can use it for taking in information if you want to have a group of things you can create a list and the way you can create a list is just typing the word list followed by your parameter name or variable name and then you need to open up with a square bracket apple um, let's see apple banana and oranges close the square bracket semicolon you also have floats which are used for decimal or floating point numbers so you could have your 10.4 and there's a couple more of them, but those will be the main ones to use. And if we save that, they should work. Oh, what are we missing here? Oh, I forgot to put my float name. So we have to give all the variables have to have a name. So you could have my float equals and that should work. Cool. So you can have different variables to store different bits of information. You can use it to store user information that like you can ask them to speak on a certain channel and take in what they say. But yeah, that's how you use variables. So you may be wondering, where do you go from now? What do you do next? And that's really up to you. So there's plenty of things you can do with LSL. If you do, we look here on the wiki again, there's absolutely loads of things you can do with the scripting language. There's more than I can cover in one video, but it's just about practicing. The LSL wiki and Google are your best friends. If you're stuck, you can look things up but really it's about once you've mastered the core concepts of how to use events how to use states how to use functions you're pretty much good to go there's obviously going to be more to language and i could cover that in a future video if people want me to but that's a quick overview of the lsl language in about 10 minutes if you like this video please subscribe if you want me to make more lsl videos let me know in the comments if, if, if you get stuck or you need help with anything, just let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thank you. Hope this helps.